friends, we've made it to the bottom here of the lower fall. It's a beautiful waterfall though from down here below. I definitely would recommend coming down here and checking it out. Well friends, welcome back to another episode of Mountains Into Memories. Today we are doing something different. Rachel, do you want to tell them what we're doing? We're going camping without the children today. Is that what you meant? Well yeah, is it tugging at your heartstrings yet that we're leaving without them? Yeah, I don't like it. My dad's staying with them so they're in good hands. It's just nagging at me that we forgot something and it's two very noisy somethings. You know, it's part of, I think, the allure of our channel, doing things as a family. From what I've been told, that people really appreciate that. And and we do too, believe me. Uh, we wouldn't take the kids on all these adventures and do all these things if, if we didn't enjoy doing it with them. Yeah. Having said that, Rachel and I have not gone anywhere, just the two of us, since our honeymoon, which was November 2016. 2016. Yeah. So, I think we deserve <laughs> a bit of a break. It's been... Wow, it's a long time. So right now, we are going to a Pennsylvania State Forest campsite in the Delaware State Forest. We don't know anything about it, but it is aptly named Rest Stop. And that's exactly what we're using it as, as a rest stop. It's about four hour drive from here. And then tomorrow in the morning, we're headed to Catterskill Falls in New York. We're gonna hopefully show you the falls there. That's all gonna be part of this episode. And then, um, We'll be headed north to Massachusetts from there. Be sure you're subscribed because this is a series that you won't want to miss if you're from the eastern United States. We're going to be showing you some stuff that you won't see on other RV YouTube channels, or at least to my knowledge, because we've never seen it before. So this is going to be fun, we think. We will see you at a gas station somewhere along the way. we got to figure out where we're going to stop and get some fuel. And uh, then we will be at... I think it's site 18 in the Delaware State Forest and hopefully we fit and find it and all that good stuff. So, on with the show. Friends, we've made it to Sheets. We just barely made it without running out of gas. We were really pushing the edge there, yeah. pushing the limit. Splash guff. Scott, welcome. We've made it to the pumps. The thing about these new Sheets is, is they're always packed because they're always offering like a lower price than everywhere else. But for us right now, we need like 30 gallons of gas. So to save 30 cents a gallon times 30 gallons of gas, it's going to equate to a good bit of money. So just something to watch out for on Gas Buddy and such. Like I said, we're getting the food here. Rachel should be out with it shortly. And then we're going to get to the campsite. It's going to be dark by the time we get there, which is probably not something you want to do with these state forest campsites. I don't know how this site's going to work out, but we couldn't find any place else to boondock for like a quick overnight, and the DCNR Pennsylvania sites are 10 bucks a night, plus a $6 fee, so it was like 16 bucks. You know, cracker barrels up here don't seem to allow it. Uh, we did find a Walmart that was a possibility, would have had to drive farther. Get the food? Got the yummies. And some snackies. Well, desserts. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
watching these gallons fill up this truck is like watching paint dry. We're only at 26.5, almost to 100 bucks. We've got a long way to go going north. Doggies are good. Let's get back on the road. We only got a couple minutes left. Well, friends, it looks like we've arrived at our site. Probably not smart to come here in the middle of the night. Of course, it's not really the middle of the night. It's like 8 o'clock. Friends, I really thought that, uh, like, if we got here just a little before 8, that that would be sufficient. Well, it's September and it ain't. This says rest stop number one. Ten dollars per night and all that good stuff. We already know all that, friends. We have, we have the permit and all that stuff. Looks like you just pull into here. We're gonna be leaving early in the morning, so it don't really matter. I think I'm just gonna pull up, pull up over here, and call it good for now, because I want to get some food and such. So yeah, uh, future reference. Probably come. Well, it's still light. And in September, 7.30 is like the max. Friends, good morning from our site here. Well, sort of from our site here. Because <laughs> we didn't actually make it to our site. But when you pull up the dirt road here, there's a nice big turnaround area. Site 19 is over this way. And our site 18 is here. You can see this now because it's light out. We could have backed in there, but we wanted to get to sleep so there's uh there's no reason for us anyway you know there was no one over there and um, if someone had came or whatever and needed to use the turnaround area we could have moved or whatever these are really nice sites though you probably want 19 though if you are coming here and you're going to actually back into your site just because of the road noise it's a little farther away from the road although in the camper for a quick overnight we did not hear the road inside now you can definitely hear it out here while you're like walking around and stuff. But this site 18 is is a big and beautiful site. You've got a picnic table and you've got a fire pit, which is awesome. Although right now it says no fires. Oh, just March 1st through May 25th, which is standard in Pennsylvania State Forests. This would be not a bad site whatsoever. So let's go give you a shot of 19. Now why would you do this as opposed to a Walmart parking lot? Well, several reasons. As you get farther north, we're finding boondocking in the more populous areas to be a little more hard to find. We did do a little bit of searching and we found a Walmart that was possible, but we instead chose this. This is nice because we're in the woods a little bit. Because there's nobody else here at this other site, at these state forest sites, I don't have to have the dogs on the leash. I get a little bit of running around in the morning, burn off some energy before we get back in the car. This is site 19. So same story, you have a picnic table and a fire pit, big area. Now this road may be a little more difficult to get up to than the other one, the driveway. You'd have to back up if it's a trailer and that may be a little more difficult. I think we could have done it, definitely not in the dark. 18 was our site anyway. I just got lucky and chose that one. If you're a good backer upper and it's not a big trailer, you can do it. The other one, our new rig is going to be 35 feet and I wouldn't even have a problem putting that in 18. I would not put a 35 foot rig back here in 19. I obviously do not recommend boondocking in state forest sites where you don't know where you're going in the dark. It worked out okay though. This was a safe place to pull off the road. A guaranteed thing which we like. You know, you don't get somewhere and then get kicked out or whatever. Friends, inside here we are perking some coffee. Situations like this is one of the reasons why we got the percolator as opposed to using the coffee pot for camping. Because if you have no electricity like now, this is what you got. The only downside to using this regularly is it does take longer. But here, I hate to have more than one thing in the camper for a purpose. And for here, this is the only thing you could use, so you'd have to swap them out or something. Um, and we need coffee. Yeah. Uh, especially today, we've like we've got a pretty big day ahead of us, and possibility of it being rainy and and dreary. So, coffee is a good thing to have. We're just gonna eat some cereal. What did you think of the camp spot? I mean, I haven't explored it yet, but it, it served its purpose. It's exactly what we needed. It wasn't that far off the interstate. 
It wasn't horrible to find. Good spot, good coffee, should be ready. And hopefully we can get to Catterskill Falls before the bulk of the rain starts. Oh, we should have um, turned down the heat some because now yeah, you did. Charted waters, wouldn't you say? I think so. Because Promised Land State Park is the farthest northeast that we've been. Um, I think we've each been to New York City, but yeah. uh, neither of us have been to Massachusetts nope. or New Hampshire nope. or Vermont. Nope. So everything that we're doing on this trip is new to us, which is the cool thing about it. Catterskill Falls, of course, is near Albany, New York, and that's where we're headed now. We're gonna go see the falls in the rain, the hurricane or tropical storm or whatever it is, it's here. It's raining, it's gonna be raining for the next couple days. So, you know, some of the scenic vistas and stuff. I don't know, the, the rain and the fog could create a nice eerie scene too. So we'll show you what we're gonna show you here regardless of weather and we're gonna make the best of this trip. Pretty bad day. The first problem is the case on the GoPro no longer holds the GoPro. So that broke. Um, so missed opportunities for footage coming up here because while we do film some stuff with our phones on our journeys, it's sometimes difficult to get a phone out quickly. The GoPro is always mounted to the windshield and so it's easy to hit the button and, and get what you want. Problem number two, we arrived here at our destination. Uh, which we'll tell you about here in a second. The refrigerator in the camper, the door flung open and everything, and we we had a beer can explode, and now everything in here is going to smell like uh, skunky beer. Um, this refrigerator or this rig is is one of the reasons actually why we bought a new rig. So there's our unofficial announcement of the new rig. Um, but long story and you'll see it in a few weeks but uh this didn't come with any sort of way to latch itself we've added these straps you got one here and one up here uh that we added because we had a maple syrup problem in one of our first camping trips that we didn't want stuff like that to continue to occur and um we must have either forgot to strap it or the strap failed or something so that's that I don't think any food got spoiled, but I'm sure it wasted a good bit of electricity on the way here because the door was open and letting the cold air out. The batteries are still at two thirds, so I guess we're okay. That's that, we just spent the last, what, half hour cleaning, maybe not quite that long, 15, 20 minutes to Lysol everything in here and try to get it so that for the next four days, because we're, it's not like it's gonna be warm enough for us to have windows open for this trip, so like, we're going to be closed in here with the smell of whatever's in here. So, uh, yeah. Not only that, but we're trading it in in a few weeks. So we don't want things in here to smell bad. Uh, because then they won't give us what they told us. So, yeah. I have to move the rig actually a little bit so we can open the tailgate of the truck and get the dogs out. And then we're going to go on a hike. And hopefully this day gets better. But it has not been a good one so far. That and we went the wrong way and that GPS issues which we continue to have. Okay, let's uh, 
move on to brighter things. We're parked here near South Lake. This is North South Lake Campground. It's a very small parking lot where we're at, but the lady at the entrance said that we could park here and there's several bigger parking lots just down the way. However, this is the closest parking lot to the trail. The road to get up here is extremely windy and twisty and if so if you have a bigger RV, you might not want to bring it up here just to do a hike. I did call several days ago to make sure that like this was going to be a viable option for us to stop along the way and see these falls because I've heard so many great things about it. And this here is the spillway to South Lake. I apologize for the raindrops on the camera. It's raining and if you can see around me too, there are some leaves starting to change. So, you know, hopefully by Tuesday, we may get some good color. And from what I've seen in like other pictures and people documenting stuff up this way, they're changing fast when they do start. We've arrived at this sort of creepy old structure. I have no idea what this was, but it's pretty neat. If you walk over to the opposite side here, it looks like there's, there's a creek and there's some sort of old stone dam up that way. So it's hard to tell, but maybe this was an old mill and they would have used the dam, which would have held back water. And, but there's also a pipeline over there. So maybe that's got something to do with it. I don't know. Over this way, there's this stone foundation here and then a stone wall. So this was obviously something. What? I don't know. And hopefully you can see friends inside the stone building here. There's concrete, sort of like a T shaped. And I don't know if there's old barrels and maybe that was a fireplace, but I don't know, hard to tell. There's a pretty good view of it. Looks like a newer metal roof on it. And here's a better look at the stone wall surrounding whatever this foundation here was. Uh, the trail we're on, it looks like it goes to the observation deck. I'm hoping that the trail that goes down to the bottom is accessible from here. So it's a very pretty trail. I'm trying to film as much as I can without getting the camera wet. And the GoPro, we'll see if the battery lasts. That's where we're at. We'll keep on trucking and we'll show you what we can interesting along the way. All right, my friends, we're here at what? Cater Still Close, which I've, it's apparently somewhere out there. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it. Painting. Yeah, there's some nice paintings I'll try to get for you. It is amazing for a rainy Saturday morning how many people are here. There's a lot of people. Like they didn't park where 50, we parked, 60 people. But there's a lot of people here. And it's, I mean, it's raining pretty good. And there's trails and paths going every which way and not really good signage and i was hoping this was a map instead it's just talking about paintings because somehow we want to figure out how to get to the bottom of the falls i know it's doable but like i said we need a map or something we've reached the viewing platform sort of it's just below I mean, if you look at the picture over just there there actually used to be a house that someone built at the top of the falls here it burned down sadly uh, it talks about how this whole area was carved out by glaciers We've got a moment here to ourselves for just a second. From the viewing platform here, it is extremely nice. Down there, we can see people walking, and that's our goal is to somehow find our way down there. Oh, what are your thoughts from above here real quick before the battery dies? It's really pretty. It's definitely a very nice view. Should be better from below. Yeah, we want to get down. We want to find our way down to the bottom. So friends, this place is kind of weird. Don't do whatever we just did. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> we took a path, which is clearly a marked path, with fences that clearly people disregard and jump over and just walk wherever they want. There's a lot of signs, but not with a lot of useful information. So, Anyone I don't know. Anyone who follows us knows how I feel about maps. And we were not given a trail map when we had to check in and come into the park. We need a map. Yeah, real bad. That's the nice thing about Pennsylvania's state parks and stuff. Even the state forests, they have brochures and maps and things that are useful and they're free. Here in New York, you have to pay and they don't give you a map. So, I mean, 
Now the trails are generally better maintained in New York, They're I think is our marked. experience, and better marked. And the signage is of a high quality, as you can see behind us, but without some sort of map telling us what Layman's Monument is, we have no idea. So we're gonna walk, I guess, and just figure it out as we go, like we always do. We're on the struggle bus, I guess, is the moral of this story. Friends, where we're at right now is the Lower Falls area. So if you're trying to find your way down here, you'll want to follow the signs to the Lower Fall. There's a lot of stairs, it's very steep. You don't have to be a real skilled hiker to get down here. You just have to be able to get up and down the stairs. And it's definitely worth coming down here. This reminds me a lot of Fall Creek in Tennessee, but that's a single drop waterfall. This has two drops. I think they're about the same height overall, maybe. This is very pretty. We're gonna head up to the middle pool though, here in a little bit. Trigger, what do you think? Yeah, he don't he don't have much to say, I guess. He's just being a whiny brat. This is the best place? This is the best part, yeah. Is absolutely. it easy to get to? Uh, yeah. I mean... Compared to down below? Yeah, I mean, this is pretty easy to get to. I mean, there's still stairs that you have to deal with, but you had to rock scramble pretty much to get over to the lower pool. Yeah, this is very beautiful here. There's the falls behind us. And up there, that's where we came from. And somewhere, would be on this side here, is where the Laurel House was located and there used to be a staircase that came down here from there back when he used to entertain guests and stuff this is really awesome i think is it uh, was it worth stopping here on our journey north to massachusetts yeah yeah this is a good stop <laughs> we're back at the camper friends and uh we're headed onward what did you think is there anything else you need to say about this place no what? just that so we want to come back at some point the campground here looks really big and i think there's a lot to do in this general vicinity that it would it would be nice to come back someday i think there's a lot in this area worth doing how far was the hike 3.41 and 688 foot elevation gain so it's not all that far but it is a long climb a, a big climb in elevation to the lower falls and i would imagine you can go farther down the creek from there probably towards the road where we've seen the waterfall coming in all right well let's get out of here and uh get dry get to massachusetts check a state off the list of places that we've never been.